So I'm here at Five Ways today to review this 2023 brand new out this spring Suzuki 800DE, the V-Strom. It's a whole new engine for Suzuki. It's uh, just under 800 cc's, producing around 85 brake horsepower and 78 newton meters of torque. Now I didn't know that this bike was fitted with a quick shifter. It is, and it is seamless. It's quite useful that you can cycle through the modes while you're riding. You need to roll off the throttle to adjust the traction control. So I've got it in power mode C, which is the lowest powered mode. I'd imagine you're rain mode. Let's see how it pulls off the traffic lights. It's desperate to go. It feels a little restricted. But once you're moving, smooth as you like. So uh, in power mode C, there, there really isn't a lot of go. It's uh, rather flat. Uh, I don't want to wait for the next junction or set of traffic lights, so forgive me if I switch into B. So B general everyday use immediately the bike feels more agile and significantly increased power much less flat but still got a lot of control at slow speeds so normally when I do these reviews I go straight out on the A63 on the motorway. Now to me this isn't the kind of bike that you'd want to particularly ride on the motorway. But we will cover a little bit of dual carriageway just to give you a feel for how the bike performs or the windscreen particularly. At the moment I'm getting a fair amount of wind on my shoulders. It's not uncomfortable and it is, as you can see from the movement of the trees, it is quite a breezy day. I'll try and give you a variety of uh, fast roads, rural, urban, and we'll go off-road a little bit as well, but nothing too aggressive. So we're going to drop on to the 1079. It's a very short stint of dual carriageway which is 70 miles an hour and for the purpose of science I am going to switch to power mode A. Oh yes that's better. Nice surge of power there. That's good. Do I have to say I haven't noticed a huge amount of wind battering. Even accelerating on that dual carriageway. And as I say, it's, it's a breezy day. It's not very agile. The handling's absolutely lovely. Visibility is good. The riding position is good. The seat's very comfortable. There are some cons to this bike. But there's a hell of a lot of pros. I've ridden this bike on a 70 mile an hour road 
I've ridden it on a rural roads and like we're on now country lanes and and some urban roads and it is absolutely effortless the suspension is beautiful it really you know, sort of bounce to it so a lot of give very comfortable the acceleration especially in power mode A is fantastic So, the 776cc Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, designed for on-road and off-road use. There's a nice solid metal sump guard there. It's, uh, it's got a radiator grille, which is fitted. Nice 21-inch front wheel there for extra control off-road. You've got the extended front forks, similar to your Teneri, and you've got uh, nice chunky Dunlop Trail Max tyres, 150 rear, 120 front. The brakes, you've got a single disc Nissan Caliper on the back, twin wavies on the front with a Nissan Caliper, Nissan Caliper 2. Yeah, walking around the bike it's got this new Suzuki look, the new front end. I think it's much more fitting for this kind of bike than it is for the, the sports naked ones. I think it suits it a lot better. It's uh, aggressive and rugged at the same time. Comes with the, the hand guards, the uh, well positioned mirrors, a good height. I'm 5'11", I'm sitting upright with a 31 inside seam. Okay, I'm on tippy toes when I'm a stationary, but you know, that's bypassable. The, uh, the chain's got a guard on it. There's no hugger, which means that all the mud's gonna splatter up underside the seat. Uh, but then again, the underside of huggers are very difficult to clean, so it does make it easier to clean, I guess. Uh, we are not going to get it absolutely bladdered today. It's a nice looking machine. On the control side of things, very simple. The bars are a nice width and give you a good grip. The screen is very clear, as you can see. The controls are nice and simple. You've got your indicator and your horn, you've got your flasher, uh, and you've got your high beam in the traditional places. The mode switch, keeping it simple. I love the way Suzuki do that, keeping it simple. It's quite heavy when you push it around. It, is, it does feel quite heavy. Uh, you can get optional extra uh, luggage for it as well. Uh, there's uh, you can get a aluminium top box and aluminium sides. Uh, you can get uh, plastic ones. I think personally, a bike like this, if you want to spend a little bit more and go for the aluminium ones, it would look better. You've got a nice LED rear light setup. It's quite pretty to look at. The exhaust is a bit, a bit ugly, but you know, at the end of the day, this is a bike for a purpose. It's not a bike intended for aesthetics so much. I wouldn't necessarily go for the bright yellow. Uh, you can get it in grey, and if there are any other colour options, I'll put them on the video. However, 
it's like riding a giant sunflower and it attracts every flying thing going. There are, as you can see probably now, it's covered in little black bugs. All the black and yellow scary things have been flocking to me. And while I've just been standing here, I'm deliberately not wearing any high vis and I am covered in bees that are trying to pollinate the motorcycle. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a nice looking piece of kit though, and we've taken it on some rural roads, we've taken it on some urban roads, it's handled them absolutely superbly. I can't, I can't quite express how easy it is to ride. It's, I've said before I hate that term flickable, but it is. It just flicks from side to side. It's so flowing, effortless, linear, but it doesn't lack excitement. It, the power band modes you've got uh, with the Suzuki adjustable mode system there you can adjust the between three simple settings you've got A, B and C A full power, C least power B middle of the road, middle of the road is absolutely fine and to be honest with you I think most people would ride around in B every day uh, but A gives you that burst of power that excitement and C is a bit flat but C is there for when you don't have so much grip and you don't want to be blatting around uh, you've got your traction control modes you've got one two and three and G G for gravel loose surfaces and your ABS is adjustable as well so you can switch it off you can switch it to two which gives you everything and one which is for looser surfaces which I'm going to try shortly down this track that you can see over there. I hope that looser surfaces doesn't mean loose bottom but uh, I will be going very carefully. The bikes 10499 on the road. Accessories, once you've added accessories in you're probably looking realistically to make it into a touring bike you're probably looking at around the 12 and a half mark. Uh, it seems to be very good on fuel. There are a few little mm's about it. There's no cruise control, which I've mentioned before. There's no heated grips, but you do have these whopping big guards, which you know will protect you from the wind blast, which is what makes your hands cold. Screen, it's very small. There is adjustment. You can make it lower, you can make it higher, but you've got to take these bolts out with an Allen key, which is a bit of a faff. Uh, I don't know why I just put some adjustment in it, make it easier. Uh, but then again, when you're taking something off road, you need everything needs to be stuck on, doesn't it? So they've probably got their reasons. The issue I was having early on, which was my right hand going numb, getting pins and needles, which, to be fair, was putting me off a little bit. Uh, I think it was probably more down to me than the bike, although there definitely are vibrations which you don't get in maybe a triple or, a, or an inline four. All round, it's, it's an exceptional machine. It's got ample power. Uh, of course, the 1050 is available, more expensive, more powerful, bigger. Do you need it? I very much doubt it. And certainly off-road, a little less power is probably is probably where you want to be. So without further ado, we've tried the roads, we've tried the tarmac, we've tried a bit of speed and a bit of slow speed. So let's try a bit of off-road. So before we set off, let's have a look. Traction control. G gravel, power band C, and ABS 1. So that should give us a little bit more control all round. And let the excitement begin.
So I've ridden about a mile down this track so far and just discovered that the camera wasn't actually switched on or recording. It is now and I'm a little less twitchy bum so it's probably going to be a little bit better for you. So the tyres, these uh, Dunlop Trailmax tyres uh, are doing a good job. There's not very much requirement for grip, there's no not been any puddles or uh, slidey gravelly bits, but they're quite comfortable. The bum test is uh, a good pass so far. Some kind of bird of prey up ahead, I suspect he's a buzzard. Searching for mice and other rodents amongst this cut grass. It might be lucky because the noise of the bike might bring him out of hiding. But what a way to enjoy the countryside. Some people say, ah, oh, you're not going fast enough. Well, no, but it's it's not my bike. It's a, it's a review. Uh, I'm not a seasoned off-road rider. So I'll take it steady and enjoy the scenery. the uh, bi-directional quick shifter blipper coming away from Fimba Cafe there straight into sixth gear don't need to be doing mega high speed because that in itself is enough the excitement of the acceleration is lovely aha so, access permitted for pedestrians, cyclists, horses and solo motorcyclists only. Let's rock and roll. We are off down Garten Bulk and we're following this rather narrow little trail. Uphill, away from the village of Garten. and hoping that there's no massively deep ruts. With the exception of, you know, a couple of little breaks though, I've been sitting in this saddle for a few hours now and I'm really quite comfortable. Quick shift is just as efficient off-road as it is on-road. See where this goes. It's a little bit of a different surface. <coughs> this chalk chalk path. A 
here we've got, again we've got a very different surface here we've got proper gravelly stuff so it's a bit bumpy going uphill trouble is I've got absolutely no idea where I am but I'm sure it'll all come clear well I wasn't planning on getting stuck behind uh, HGV on the uh, return leg of this day out on the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE but it's somewhat more relaxing than that horrible horrible chalky stony pebbly rocky track and as he's going downhill he's building up a bit of speed anyway so going back pros and cons well standard in this guys that I'm sitting on right now it's 104999 no it isn't it's 10499 nearly made it the most expensive motorcycle in the world 10,499 pounds so <coughs> what do you get for that you get an 800 cc parallel twin 766 I believe it is, parallel twin, brand new, a very slick up and down quick shifter, blipper, call it what you will. You get three traction control modes, well four including gravel, you get three power modes and you get, including off, three ABS modes. That's it. Okay, you're getting good quality machine. It's exciting, but it's going to cost you probably another two or three grand to get it up to a spec for taking somebody or even yourself on a little tour. The seat will not need adjusting, it's unbelievably comfortable. I've said this about bikes in the past and then it's, you know, you've got to ride a couple hundred miles on them and all of a sudden it's not unbelievably comfortable anymore, but I'm just not feeling any twinges through this. I'm not feeling any stiffness in my neck, I'm not feeling any stiffness in my wrists, my arms feel fine, my shoulders are relaxed. And then there's the windscreen, well, the fact that it's manually adjustable with an Allen key is a bit naff if you ask me. But, that said, it's, um, it's doing its job. I'd be interested to see what it's like one position up. Unfortunately, I don't have an Allen key with me to adjust it. It's a good looking machine. It looks purposeful. It's got the cool crosser sort of look about it with, uh, without being... Uh, you know, an illegal off-roader, and but it makes a nice noise. You can always up, uprate uh, your back box. It's got plenty of go. More pros. Down there, I don't know if you can see, I'll lean forwards, there is a USB socket, a standard. That's handy. Having ridden the old V-Strom 650 and the 1050, I think that in many respects this is a better bike than both of those. It's certainly got a lot more poke, brakes are better.
better wind protection? I don't know, I don't know. Difficult to say. Oh, here we are. But it's been a fun day, so thank you, Suzuki.